purpose of this video is to present a practical approach toward accident prevention using barrier analysis. Considered causal, it is used by large agencies such as the Army Corps of Engineers, Department of Energy, Department of Defense, the Atomic Energy Commission, and NASA. Barrier analysis originates with MORT, Management Oversight, and Risk Tree, developed during the 1970s. It is a standalone analysis and can be used by individuals to live safer lives. Accidents can be thought of in terms of an unwanted energy transfer from a source to the target. Stevenson defines an incident as an unwanted energy flow. He defines an accident as occurring when this unwanted energy flow, in the absence of adequate barriers, strikes targets in the energy path and injures people and or damages property. Embodied in Stevenson's definition are the four components in barrier analysis, including an unwanted energy flow, a target, less than adequate LTA barriers, and multiple causes. A strength of barrier analysis is that its components are considered causal. Using the familiar fire triangle, necessary means that if one of the components is not present, fire will not occur. Likewise, an accident will not occur. Sufficient means that if all of the components are present, a fire must occur. Similarly, an accident must occur. The steps in the barrier analysis process and in this video follows the components of the accident process. First, identify either the target or the potential unwanted energy transfers. Then, identify potential barriers and last, prioritize the barriers. A worksheet incorporating this process is provided also. The first step is to determine the target or person or object that is to be protected. It could be the pedestrian on the sidewalk, using an automobile example, the driver, passengers, and car itself could be the target. Or in the home with a small child, the home may need to be childproof. Second, there is a source of an unwanted energy flow that has the potential to transfer to the target and result in injury, damage, or loss. The banana peel can cause the person to slip and fall. The driver can hit another car, hit a barrier, and have an accident. Hazardous cleaners, detergents, and other chemicals are often stored in the cabinet below the sink. Third, there are less than adequate barriers. They can be placed on the unwanted energy source, placed between the unwanted energy flow and the target, placed on the target, or separated by time or space. Warning signs, tape, deal are examples of barriers. For drivers, jersey barriers, seat belts, airbags, and crash zones are designed to protect drivers and passengers. Childproofing the home might include electrical outlet safety plugs and cabinet safety latches. The barriers are less than adequate or LTA, meaning that they are not perfect in preventing the potential unwanted energy flow. If the energy transfers to the target, an accident occurs with injury, damage, or loss. The car deforms, the driver is injured, the child is harmed. Last, there may be multiple causes. There can be more than one source of potential energy flows or the source can generate more than one potential unwanted energy flow. The second step is to identify potential unwanted energy transfers. Stevenson lists a relative complete listing of energy flow sources. Typically, most people will deal with corrosive, electrical, explosions, fire, falls, thermal and pathogenic energy flows. Living involves wanted energy transfers. Unfortunately, wanted energy transfers can result in unwanted energy transfers. 
The automobile that provides transportation can kill us. The stove that cooks our food can severely burn us. The furnace that heats our house can burn the house down. The electricity that runs all our conveniences can injure or kill us. The food we eat can poison us. Once potential unwanted energy flows occur, then we can identify barriers and other measures to protect us. Barriers can be placed on the source of the energy flow, between the source and the target, on the target, and time or space can be used to separate the target from the source of the potential energy flow. The barrier can be placed on the source of the energy flow to eliminate or reduce the amount of the energy flow. The banana peel is removed. For drivers, speed limits potentially reduce the amount of energy transfer in a crash. Removing the chemicals from below the sink or using non-toxic chemicals focus on reducing the energy source when childproofing. Barriers could be placed between the source and the target. Closing the sidewalk with physical barriers works. Jersey barriers, guardrails, and wide medial strips help to prevent head-on car crashes. Child safety latches are barriers between what is in the cabinet and the child. Barriers can be placed on the target. Safety helmets and padding are examples. Automobile seat belts and airbags could be considered hard barriers. Driver's education courses and enforcement of DWI laws could be considered soft barriers. Telling the child that the stove is hot or telling them no if their attempt to open the cabinet are examples of protecting the child. Coming back an hour later is separation by time. Avoiding rush hour, driving to reduce potential accidents is an example of separation by time. The detour is an example of separation by space. Detours for highway construction are commonplace. The child playing in the family room is separation by space in contrast to playing in the kitchen. A worksheet is presented that incorporates the barrier analysis model components and steps. A quick examination of the worksheet reveals the basic components of barrier analysis. Using the banana peel as an example, start with identifying the target in column two, or with identifying the source of the potential unwanted energy transfer in column one. Either way works. The third column identifies potential barriers and controls that can be implemented. The last two columns identify the purpose of the barrier and its practicability or limitations. Last, prioritize the barriers to be implemented by their effectiveness and practicality. For illustrative purposes, the automobile and childproofing worksheets are provided also. They utilize the examples used in this video. Viewers can stop the video and examine these tables in greater detail if desired. Accidents can be thought of as an unwanted energy transfer from the source of the energy flow to the target. For individuals and agencies, it is a process of identifying the sources of potential unwanted energy transfers. Preventing accidents is simply the process of placing barriers that, unfortunately, or less than adequate between the source of the unwanted energy flow and the target on the source of the potential unwanted energy transfer or on protecting the target. A barrier analysis identification worksheet is provided to assist in the process. For individuals, consider the barrier analysis process as a way of thinking. It helps us to focus on what I can do to be safer and to reduce accidents.